Can you imagine your life where money is your friend, working with you to achieve all your dreams and desires? If you struggle seeing money as your friend, then join Kathy Cook Noble, financial advisor and educator on understanding how your money can work for you. It is possible. Now, here is Financially Speaking with Kathy Cook Noble. Good afternoon and welcome to the Inspired Choices Network. You are listening to Financially Speaking with your host, Kathy Cook Noble. And what we do here every Monday night is we get together and we tackle something financial. And it doesn't necessarily mean there's math involved. And I know uh, I get that a lot. And that, no, you do not need to understand math or have paper and pencil. Uh, what that means is we tackle topics that either are confusing or just not quite sitting right with people or there's something out there and they don't really understand what that means. Uh, I get that a lot actually in my practice with clients where they'll say, where they had a different advisor and they just, they felt they don't want to ask a stupid question. So they never asked anything. And I always tell people, nobody cares more about your money than you do. At least they shouldn't. <laughs> so there's no such thing as a stupid question to ask. Uh, so that's what we do here is we tackle everyday finance. We don't get into any of the complicated uh, metrics and uh, formulas that you hear on TV that makes it sound really complicated because I think that just takes away from you being able to feel like you can understand your own stuff. And there is absolutely no question that you can understand your own stuff. And that's all you really have to understand. Uh, everything else is for fun, but understanding your own stuff, that's where it really gets to be important. And that's also where it gets to be fun. Because when you start to understand it, you're not scared and you're not intimidated and you're able to start to make plans and be comfortable and, and release all that stress and frustration every time the word finance comes up and you think of a different F word that it causes that kind of fear. So that's what we do here. Uh, what we do here on the Inspired Choices Network as a whole is we look at a holistic approach to life and uh, to each individual. There are shows for everybody. And I say that because each host here has some special gifts that they are, are very willing and able to share. And if there is something that you need help with or support with, whether it's relationship advice, financial advice, obviously, uh, if it's business advice, if it's just advice about, you know, child rearing, pets, anything like that, we have shows here and I encourage you to plug yourself in to the show that you need at the time that you need it. Um, and there's no excuse that you can't plug yourself in because we do have an app. And it is absolutely free. You can download it free from the App Store. It's for Android, for iPhone. Uh, we are on over 250 platforms now. You are welcome to join us in the chat room live. Uh, if you can't join us live, that's no problem. Uh, you can pick up the show that you need at the time that you need it whenever you want, because it's on all the shows are right there and available on our app, which is absolutely free. And honestly, if you haven't done it, you can do it and it can be done like in the first break. It takes no time at all to do it. So, and if there's something you find us missing on this network, feel free to reach out to Christine because we are always willing and able to talk to people about what we have missing on the platform that people need to hear about. And there are, there are topics out there that you might be the expert on and think, why don't they cover this? That's because we're waiting for you. So reach out and talk to Christine and we will um, absolutely, she's, if she can get me a numbers person who's behind the scenes on a, a video part now of the show, then she is absolutely the queen at walking people through how to manage their show. And you don't have to have experience. She will give it all to you, all the advice and all the encouragement and all the support that you need. So please feel free to reach out to Christine. Uh, and you can find her on the Inspired Choices Network podcast because that is actually her hosting. So tonight, I'm going to share with you, there's some, something special we're doing, actually. Every once in a while, we start off a series. And as most of you know, International Women's Day comes up in March, March the 8th this year. And we're starting, uh, we're going to do a series on women in business and, and understanding finances. And, and there'll be specific topics on each of the, the ladies that we have from now until then. And my co-host and good friend, Lori Hawkins, is going to be uh, starting this series with me and she's going to be closing it with me. And we are really, really quite blessed to have her because she is an exceptional, exceptional, um, businesswoman, uh, coach, mentor. She is really, um, a consultant that 
businesses need when they are really either wanting to grow and expand or if they're having some struggles and they need that person to help turn them around, she is absolutely the person I would tell you to call. She is an excellent business uh, consultant and I have no trouble telling you that she's also an awesome person because I know her very well and and she's just an absolute beautiful one person to know. Um, she has she's going to be joining us tonight and she's also going to be joining us on March the 7th so that we can round out International Women's Day. Uh, Lori is a curator, catalyst, and connector. She is a certified business success strategist, speaker, radio show host, trainer, and leader who drives revenue, results, and raving fans along with fulfillment and flow. Lori's reputation is built on her unique ability to enable strategy and soul to coexist. She is a thought leader with the rare ability to both inspire and create actionable strategies. And daily, she inspires people across all of her platforms. She's on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, podcast, blog, and live to create impact and influence. She's an award-winning leader in business for more than 25 years. And Lori is focused on using her expertise to guide high-level leaders and business owners to become influencers in their industry, business, and life. And that is really just the tip of the iceberg for Lori. So Lori, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's it's such an honor to be here with you. As you were speaking, I was thinking about how rare it is. And, and this is really important coming up to Women International Women's Day, how rare it is to find women in business, truly, and this is something as women that we have to continue to work on, where you can collaborate, where you can grow each other, where you can challenge each other to really escalate who you are, how your business is, all of it. And so I am so personally grateful that along this path, I met you because from the moment we met, we've been able to do that. And I'll add Christine to that circle as well. Um, I'm not on the, I don't have a show with uh, Inspired Choices Network today. However, I did and I love working with them and everything you said is absolutely like bang on. And when I'm ready to uh, enter the podcasting world again, I wouldn't choose anyone else. So that's, uh, thank you. Just thank you for being here. And thank you for being the type of woman that we can have these collaborative conversations. I'm just super excited always to be in your energy and do anything with you. That's so funny because we have been talking for a while and, and this, the secret behind all this is when I'm doing stuff, I think about, I could do this with Lori. And, and there are times when I think about other people, but I think about how you and I could work well together mm -hmm. um, on really just about anything. Uh, but there's been a few projects that you and I have been talking about, and we're going to actually share some of that tonight because we have finally um, made the time for each other to put that together. And, and I'm so excited about it, not just because I got to work with you on it and we're going to be working together going forward, but because I know what we're putting out there for people, and what we're going to be providing is exactly what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. And you and I have been around for a while and mm -hmm. we've seen where there's all kinds of these courses and programs and just uh, you get all kinds of stuff in your, your mail, your email, just constantly bombarding you. And you and I have been, uh, you know, we've tried different things and, and it's a lot about what they're gonna do and then you never do it. And they, they never tell you anything really useful. And with our, that kind of, frustration. <laughs> we developed uh, something that we're not going to tell you what to do. We're going to tell you what to do. We're going to tell you what to do. <laughs> it's going to be like, well, you're just going to, here it is. Like there's no fluff. And that's exactly one of the things that I enjoy the most with working with people is when we can just cut the fluff and get right to it. Cause uh, for people that know me well, they know I'm not really that fluffy and I don't like, <laughs> I don't like all that fluffy stuff. I'm like, just let's hit the bottom line. Uh, I know that was my big challenge in school when I uh, when I switched from the business faculty over to the social sciences for for a short time. And uh, when I finished that program there, it was a lot of words. And I'm like, can't we just bottom line this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I came a formula the business- for this? <laughs> I know. I'm like, we came from the business school. We need to do a 10 page essay. Can't we do a one page summary? What the heck? Exactly. So it's, uh, I, I never, they never converted me. So, <laughs> so, uh, I, it's one of the things I've always enjoyed doing and, uh, uh, even helping people in my practice where we can just cut through all this stuff and get to the bottom line of where they're at and how we fix it. And that's really what you and I have talked about for women, uh, people generally, but a lot of women need that support. And um, we will launch a little bit of that information tonight. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I want to give Lori a chance for those of you that are joining us tonight who maybe don't know Lori as well as as we do um, to give her a chance to tell you who she is. And you can get to know her a little bit better. Uh, throughout the night as well she's with us co she's with me all night as my co-host slash guest but really more my my partner so uh, Lori maybe share a little bit about uh, how you got going in the business world and all that fun stuff yeah oh my gosh that always does the flashback thing right I um I think the other thing that I love so much about Kathy and and I don't think I've ever shared this with you so I'm going to give you a little secret I actually won the math award in high school nice (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> so if you meet me, there's a reason why that's a little odd. And I think Kathy probably thinks it's odd because I really love the soul side of business. I'm really, you know, from the moment I became a leader in corporate, it's just, I've always leaned towards that. How do we nurture the soft skills? How do we develop the soft skills? And I think, and yet so driven to the results, the numbers stuff, right? Which I think is why we enjoy so many of our conversations because it's like the results and relationships mixed together. Um, But you did a great job of introducing me. So I'll say I don't have a lot to add, except I need to update my uh, information because I think of now I've aged a bit. So, you know, I've been in business for over 30 years. I started my career in hospitality actually back up even a little bit more. I was the first female salesperson hired in the wood products industry in Canada. And so um, I knew I needed to get sales experience so that I could, you know, sort of grow in business. I had been brought up to say that that was an important element of business. And so I started in sales. I left that industry and uh, went into telecommunications always though thought I was going to be hospitality when I began. So I think what's really interesting is when you blend sort of hospitality and that service side, I come from a um, farming background. So that community piece, all of those elements are like these layers that are so important when you grow in business and you kind of fast forward to where you and I are today. Um, But I spent, uh, you know, 15 years in corporate and realized, hmm, I think that there's something more out there. I was working for a large corporation. Um, We had been purchased. I went through a merger. I spent two years figuring out how to downsize, right size, merge sales teams across the country. And I just had a different calling. So I launched out on my own, having no idea I mean, you grew up in entrepreneur world. I had no idea what being an entrepreneur was going to be like. And um, it's crazy. So (laughs) how we met was, you know, we're always on this journey to learn more and find more knowledge and find new tools to be able to grow as an entrepreneur. Because in corporate, you have those tools. They're, They're there for you. And you don't realize the importance of the fact that they're there for you and the people are there for you. And so it's a very different experience. And what's I think brought Kathy and I together is all the years of what we've learned in business, everything that we have in the vault from our own experiences, all the way through to the different courses that we have taken, the education piece, Um, both in, you know, university, but also beyond that. And now merge that all together. And what we've come to realize is there's really a few simple things that can really support a business owner. It's, it's, we make it complicated. It's, it's not actually that complicated. And when we, you know, her and I have been brainstorming this thing for 18 months, what can we give to people that can really help 
through this time of change and uncertainty, I guess, but more so just reinvention. What can we do to support that reinvention and growth for business owners that are maybe in a different place than we are today because we've, you know, we've come through through some of those experiences to land here. Absolutely. That's a, a little like a tried to snapshot. Yeah, it. it's perfect. Yeah. And your timing was perfect because it's right <laughs> at our first break point. So that's the perfect uh, time for us to take a break. And when we come back, we will jump into uh, some of the things that we've been talking about and actually what we've been doing and uh, how, frankly, I think it can change the world for a lot of people. And I, uh, like you, there's so much out there that uh, people get caught up in and they just needed my, in my honest opinion, they just need somebody to cut through all that and say, here it is. And I think we've done that. So I'm excited to uh, share that after the break. So don't go anywhere. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and my co host, Lori Hawkins, is here for us uh, for the whole night. We'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at bookkeepplus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host, Kathy Cook Noble, and I'm here with Lori Hawkins, a great friend and fantastic business mentor and uh, entrepreneur. And we have joined together uh, for finally, <laughs> we have joined together. We've talked about this. And what happened was, and, and I'll, I'll just start sharing a little bit, and, and Lori and I will be able to share a little bit more together. Um, Lori and I have talked over the years about business, obviously, and uh, some challenges with it and uh, challenges with courses that you take and programs that you take. And and the, the bottom line for us was we, we know a lot of people that are in business, women specifically in this case, that get into business, um, have great ideas and have uh, great opportunities to execute the ideas and they don't know a lot of the business side of things. They don't, and in terms, I'll deal with the money part. <laughs> they don't understand. Um, and, and I can tell you from my bookkeeping clients in our practice, I've sat with clients and they don't know the difference between revenue and cash in the bank. They, they don't understand. And this is no criticism at all, because where on earth would you learn this? Unless you went to business school or you read a lot of that kind of textbook or watch, you know, business shows, for example, uh, it, it just there's no manual for entrepreneurship. And a lot of people that get into uh, being an entrepreneur, they have a great idea and people like it and they start selling a little bit. And then as it grows, they're like, I don't understand what 
cash flow is. I don't understand what financial statements are. I don't understand what you do with financial statements, why you need them. Um, how do you go about expanding your business? Uh, what is this stuff called human resource management? Uh, what are taxes? <laughs> you know, what do you charge taxes on? Like, these are all the questions mm -hmm. that have come up completely legitimately that people need to know. And they're either afraid to ask, or frankly, they don't know where to ask the questions because there is no site or place that you can go to really to get these answers. Uh, I get questions of, do I incorporate? Do I not incorporate? What's the difference? Um, what, you know, why would you do one over the other? Uh, why wouldn't you, you know, all these questions. And they're very good questions. And when people start asking these questions, it really takes them in a direction where they have more questions than they do answers. Mm -hmm. And Lori and I came together and said, you know, there's got to be a better way. There's, there's got to be an easy way that you can say, I'm going into business. I have no idea about the financial part of it. Um, and Lori will talk about all the other things that are like my part is actually the easy part because it's the financial part. And a lot of times people think it's the hard part, but it's truly the easy part because you just take numbers and you plug them in. But if you don't know what or where to plug them, then that is where it becomes complicated. So my part of our program was to do financial statements and uh, maybe Lori, should I share my part completely or do you want to? Yeah, I, I, well, and I was, I was just going to highlight what you said there, yeah. Kath, because I think it's super important is as much as the math isn't the hard part, the finances aren't the hard part. The difficult part is understanding the key performance metrics. Right. So, so that's where I really appreciate your expertise because, you know, I might even be good at numbers, but the reality is I don't know what numbers I'm supposed to be looking at as a business owner. Um, that all those questions that you spoke to, and, and when I say I, I'm not speaking about myself because um, you know, I think something Kathy and I have come to realize we, we did both go to business school. So we have this understanding of the basics of really important fundamentals of business that quite frankly, I almost took for granted when I started as an entrepreneur and I didn't realize everybody wouldn't have that expertise. That was kind of our first conversation was saying, you know, what are the things people are struggling with, especially through these uncertain times? What, you know, what do we have that we can actually offer to people to support them? And, and it's hard because when you're in it and you have that expertise, you don't realize how much other people might be struggling with it. I, I said for the first decade in my business, um, I was a sales leader. I have expertise in sales it's a no brainer for me. I didn't realize people struggled with that. Yeah. It didn't make sense to me as it doesn't make sense to you. People might struggle with their finances. So we've really tried to peel back the layers, listen to people, have conversations, hear what those struggles are, because we each have our own. They're just different <laughs> expertise as we, I mean, mine's marketing. I'll just call that a spade. You know, it's, I keep buying courses in marketing, wishing someone would give me the exact toolkit to make this thing work. Um, so, you know, we understand when, when you don't have that and what happens in business is you do grow. So whatever your passion is, whatever this expertise you as a business owner have, you can, you can actually grow the curve and do really, really well, which is dangerous because you get up here having success, that founder's success, the founder's trap of, oh, okay, but I'm doing it. And that's the exact spot that you need to pause and say, what got you here is not going to get you to that next peak. This is where you have to implement really solid financial tools. So that's, you know, that's your piece. And then from my perspective is it's also the time where you really do a deep dive on what is your vision? What is that true vision for your business? Not just I started because I have a passion and, and some expertise in it, but a vision for where you're going for the future from there. And um, also one of the critical 
pieces at that point is who's your avatar? Because when you start business, it's okay to start broad. You kind of need to actually a little bit so you can learn where you're more successful. You've got some nuances that along the way help you really to, to decide what that next chapter is. And in that is who is our actual ideal client? What is our actual target market? Who are we the best at serving? How can we be the best in a niche area? And then, you know, align your vision and your values and all of those pieces to it as well. Um, but it's so, uh, I'm going to use a, you know, one of those, <laughs> it's esoterical right now. It's just this random Hey, you got to look after your finances. Hey, you got to know your vision. Yeah. But people don't actually know what that really means. Any of it. They don't. And they get overwhelmed. They, they can really get overwhelmed quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I have seen it and you've seen it, obviously. Uh, there's a lot where uh, I've been in it. We, ha- we had the same thing in our family business where everyone, we were so busy growing that we didn't put the internal structure in place. So Mm -hmm. we could say, where are we going? And what's the projection for this? And by the way, did we know how much it was going to cost? Because Mm -hmm. we just kept going and going and going. And, and, and I, I remember I saw Robert Hurievec and Damon John speak once, and they were um, from the original uh, Dragon's Den and Shark Tank and those shows on TV, right? They were Shark Tank. <clears throat> Damon John was, Robert was both both of them. But um, I remember the question came up and Robert was asked about the businesses and putting it in. And he said, one of the worst things that can happen to the business owner is they have money to keep spending. Yes. Because he said they did in his, when he was most strapped for cash, that's when he was most efficient because he couldn't keep throwing money at it. Mm. And he said, that's where he started to really focus and do well on whatever that particular business was at the time. Cause he said he got caught himself caught. And I can tell you from experience, we got caught in this where you, you just kept doing stuff and, and you were throwing money at it, throwing money at it, throwing money at it. And you didn't realize that you weren't paying attention, that it really wasn't working that well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, one of the questions I ask all business owners is well, what's the purpose of a business, not your business, a business, right? It's simple. It's to earn and keep profitable customers. That's right. That's the purpose of every business. Right. And the key word profitable, another key word, keep, right. right? So are you measuring the profitability of earning a customer and are you measuring the difference between the profitability of earning one versus keeping one and honestly are you measuring the profitability at all that's right <clears throat> and and how many people have we talked to they really don't know if they're profitable or not no and, well, like you said they think that revenue is cash yeah that's cr- like that's a critical um, understanding and again absolutely no judgment Oh, because yeah. if, if, if you weren't taught that, how would you actually know that? So I think that's really, you know, you and I, there's, it's not about the criticism. It's, we just have such a passion to really help because what's the, the engine of any economy it's, it's our small, medium businesses and that you and I are so passionate about mm-hmm. wanting to really serve in any way that we can in this space that's really suffered in the last few years. It has. And, and when I hear about, I mean, this year, this last couple of years, you've got all these businesses, you hear about closing when we had the record number of bankruptcies in 2009. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it, it's heartbreaking because you and I both know this is not, when you start a business, you're not working nine to five, Monday to Friday, you're working nine to nine, Monday to Sunday, like mm-hmm. it is all day, every day. You think about it, you sleep it, you you wear it, you eat it. It's part of your DNA while you're getting yourself going. And like you said, you you just take on everything you can, and you are it. You're the marketing department, you're the finance department, you're the app, you're the HR department, you're the legal department. You are it when you get started, um, and and that's controlling because, you know, you feel like, you know, what's going on, giving up some of that control. I, I struggle with that myself. Um, I have a little bit of a control issue, but, uh, I work on it every day (laughs) and, 
that, and that's how we grow. That's how we've been growing because I'm getting better with, you know, just acknowledging and, and, and it's like anything acknowledging that that's the issue is really the first step. So Mm -hmm. when you need help as a business owner, uh, there is nothing wrong with asking for help. I get questions all the time from our, our bookkeeping side of things. And, and, and I'm, surprised not in a judgmental way i'm just surprised because some of these people have been in business for a long time and mm-hmm. they're just now learning about the difference between profit and cash flow mm-hmm. and how those two numbers work mm-hmm. and and i to me exactly like you i took a lot for granted for, because i grew up in a family business mm-hmm. um and and i grew up in automotive so honestly i took a lot for granted i just assumed everybody drove and got a car, (laughs) you know, like worked every day and every weekend. And I I thought that was normal. Um, Apparently it's not. (laughs) No, Kathy. (laughs) I've learned. (laughs) That was my last 10 years of a journey. I learned that, you know, it's okay to have a life outside of work. And, uh, and actually it's kind of fun. So that's, there's a, there's always something, everybody's situation is different it's like the on the financial side everybody's plan is different i could take identical twins and have a different plan because everybody has a different goal or a different lifestyle that they want not everybody is the same we don't not everybody's aspiring to be a publicly traded company that's not the case there are some people that that i know and you know that they want to have a profitable business that makes them a nice income for their families and there is nothing wrong with that plan either uh, and what you and I have come up with, uh, I think is just the absolute needed basic information to get their business on a solid footing so that they can grow if they want to grow, however big that might look, um, if they want to expand, however big that looks, um, and how they can really understand the side that, that you would look at where a business is its own person. Mm-hmm. And it needs to have a, a plan as well as a going concern. So we have to talk about a succession plan. We have to talk about because, you know, what happens when you're not here, either by retirement, by choice, or by it's your time to expire on this planet. And the business is still here. You know, the car is here. The house is here. Something's got to happen with, with this. So that's where, where you're really good at, at helping people just acknowledge that that's something we need to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people are afraid to talk about, mm-hmm. not really. But uh, they're also a little bit afraid of the money, too. <laughs> a little bit? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, so I think actually we're up to our second break. When we come back, Lori is going to share with you uh, a lot more about our 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 future and our plans and and all the opportunities that we're going to help people with. Cause there is frankly, there is nothing more exciting and fun for me. And I I know for Lori than to see people do well, I I get, I think sometimes I actually get more excited when people's money grows than, than they get, because it's almost like I take it on personally. And I, I almost, if I see the market going down, it causes me stress. And I'm like, what? And then the money grows. I'm all excited. And it's the same with the business. It's so much fun to see people do well and be successful. And uh, it's anyway, I'm just super excited and blessed to be part of it with you. So we're going to take our second break of the night. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm your host, Kathy Cook-Noble. Lori Hawkins is with us all night as our co-host. And we'll be right back. Too many of us get caught up in the unreal lives of reality television and complete to acquire stuff, which is setting us up to accumulate lots of debt. We're scared, confused, and don't know who to talk to. By tuning into Financially Speaking Radio Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble, you'll learn tips you can use to improve your financial health, which in turn can improve your overall health and make for a very happy life. Live a life you can afford and enjoy. It is possible. Listen for Financially Speaking Radio Show every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Money is complicated, right? 
Actually, no, it's not. You don't have to be a trader on Wall Street to get a handle on your money. TV shows often instill fear to keep you believing you can't understand it or do anything yourself. If dealing with your finances brings up a lot of other F words, then you need to read All Ladies Should Use the F Word, A Guide to Loving Your Finances by Kathy Cook Noble. Kathy helps you take control of your finances and leave the other F word, fear, in the dust. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Financially Speaking Show with financial advisor and educator Kathy Cook Noble. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Kathy at BookkeepPlus.ca. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to Financially Speaking on the Inspired Choices Network with your host, uh, me, Kathy Cook Noble, and our co host tonight and special guest, Lori Hawkins, who's going to be joining us a couple times because we're going to be sharing a lot of information over the next few weeks for. Uh, leading up to International Women's Day. So before we went to the break, Lori, we were just talking a little bit about what you and I have been working on, and I'll let you share your part of it now. Sounds good. I uh, I was thinking too about what you said, um, how when you start your business, you're doing it all. And what's interesting is you're doing it all, and yet you don't typically have these tools readily available to you. Um, but also... When you look at it, I, I would say, I'm interested in getting your answer on this. If I could go back and change one thing, and you've owned multiple businesses, so I'm really curious about your answer. If I could change one thing, I would have hired faster out of the gate. I would have probably, <laughs> my marketing people are not going to love me right now. I probably would have actually invested less in marketing in the first couple of years and turned that money into hiring some people that were genius in their area so that then we could have, you know, not, I could have not been doing, wearing all those hats, doing everything. And so when we put this program together, that was also one of the things we were considering. So does that ring true for you? So funny. That's exactly what I was thinking. I would have, even just going back six or seven years, mm -hmm. I would have hired someone sooner. Um, and it's funny because I had a conversation with a, a different advisor and he had said to me right out of the gate, like years and years ago when he started, first thing he did was hire an assistant. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, what made you do that? He said, he, he knew uh, he had gone to, to business school as well. And we were having this conversation and he said, I knew my target right out of school. And I knew what I was going to do. And I wanted to have somebody on board right away that could grow it with me. So right. he hired an assistant right out of the gate. And I thought, yeah, that was the move. Mm -hmm. And I should have done the same thing. I waited too long in every business mm -hmm. to hire somebody. I got to, getting to the point when you're so completely overwhelmed and you're working 12, 15 hours a day, seven days a week, you're past the point where you should have hired someone. Yeah. And I did that so many times that uh now I, I i do have control issues i joke about that but mm -hmm. but i am a lot faster to hire now because uh i don't have that need where i need to hang on to everything i'm okay if if you have the knowledge she has knowledge he has knowledge and you can do it better than me i'd rather be in a position where i've got somebody on staff who does it better than me than mm -hmm. me doing it myself you're i agree completely yep yeah it's one of the it's one of the things of uh, as a business owner, being so mindful of if you're doing everything in your business, 
you're not actually the business owner, you're probably an underpaid employee in your own business. And that, that slight little shift that says, what are you the very best at that nobody else can do? And what are those tasks? And really, really knowing that really getting to a place where you know that and you protect that and you say, those are the tasks that you need to work on as the business owner, because nobody else can grow the business like you, unless you're working on them and everything else, find a way to delegate. And that doesn't mean, you know, you and I have both had the opportunity to bring in some, um, some people on, you know, part-time or somebody that maybe has their own business and, You just leverage their skills for that. So it's not necessarily always hiring another employee, um, but finding that way to make sure that those tasks are outsourced and not sitting on your plate. Because, um, you know, I guess for our listeners is think about a week, even actually make it simpler. Think about a day. Maybe it was today. And how many of the hours that you invested in your business were actually put towards revenue generating activities, moving the needle in your business activities versus, you know, admin tasks or, you know, non-profitable tasks that have to be done. Do they have to be done by you? So I think that was, you know, you and I have kind of shared that. So it's really important. Um, And then, and then when we talk about the programs that we've invested in, one of the things that both Kathy and I have noticed as a theme is there's a ton of information. There's no, there is no shortage of information. So if you want to go read about finances or you want to go read about sales, marketing, leadership, it's all out there. It, it's all out there. The challenge is it's all very high. I mean, the courses we've taken high level. Um, The marketing is probably better than the execution in most courses. There's some fabulous people out there. So I'm not saying for everything. Um, And so it ends up confusing business owners more than anything, because it's more information without the actual strategy to align with your business. So when Kathy and I spoke, it's like, okay, we've got to give people strategy and finance tools. Those two things are critical. So my side I'm bringing to the table is the strategy part of it is um, when you walk away from this, this beautiful little short course we're putting together um, self-study with a little bit of Kathy and I in a Facebook group where we'll, where we'll come and provide some support. Um, My part is that you at the end of it, will have a one page strategy that can guide your year because I also don't believe in these like three, five year strategies anymore. It's like the world is reinventing at such a fast, fast cycle. Um, but a one year, a 12 month strategic plan that will help you and guide you in executing your business. Absolutely. And <clears throat> my part to go with that program is I've developed a user friendly set of financial statements. Because, and I will tell you, this is what I use. Um, The very first thing I do when I go into a business and I, Gloria and I have had this conversation. I just had this experience a year and a half ago, worst I've ever seen it. The very first thing I did was I assembled the cash flow and I made it very detailed for what I was doing. I track cash daily. Mm -hmm. And that is the only way, in my opinion, we turn the business around because I took control. There was a, I mean, it needed everything period <laughs> actually it just needed everything well what i love about your your tool is it's also beautiful for plant like it obviously it's real time right and it's also you can you can play with it so that yep. you can say okay strategically i'm thinking about this for the next 30 days let me plug it into my spreadsheet and see how that's going to look 30 days out if i make decision a That's right. Which is just like, boom, at your fingertips, you can make good future decisions in your business too. Exactly. So juicy and amazing. And, and, you know, it's, 
it's meant to be very simple. Mm -hmm. So the way I put it together is same as you, very simple. Like uh, there's no fluff. It's this is how you use the spreadsheet. All the formulas are in there. It's color coded. Uh, all you have to do is plug your numbers in and you have the tabs, for example, just with the cash flow. It's January to December, exactly like you said, is plug in what if, if this is January and I'm planning on a big purchase in July, let's plug that number in and say that's what cash I'm going to need because the cash needs to be accounted for and it needs to be there when you need it. So if you're planning on buying something and, and this is a, I will tell you, because I'm still part of the family business, this is a struggle I have with my brother and him and I get along great. And because you're siblings, you can talk differently to each other. And he'll be like, I know, I know. Is there a cost benefit analysis? And I'm like, I'm just saying, is it profitable? This is dinner table conversation at Captain's house. <laughs> playing euchre on Friday night or whatever. And he's like, I know, I know. <laughs> so, but it, it is. And it's a, just an easy visual because I find that that everybody, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're a numbers person or you prefer words or whatever. If you see it right in front of you, it's so much easier to plan mm -hmm. for it. And mm -hmm. then the other part of that, which is not the same is your profit and loss or your income statement, as it's known. Uh, it, you plug your numbers in and there's a comparative and it says, this is what I did this year. And you plug in last year's numbers and you can see, and it will calculate the difference for you to say you're up or you're down. Now, the same story on the balance sheet tells you what is it today? What was it last year at that particular point in time? Because that's usually usually do it on your fiscal year end. Mm -hmm. However, Lori and I are providing it so it's on a monthly basis. If you want, you can plug your number in every month and say, where am I at for the month of January, for example? January just finished. How did I do? Because mm -hmm. what Lori and I know from experience is we cannot change the past. But what we can do is we can look at the future and we can look at the past as a learning tool to say, did we overspend? Uh, do we have money left over? And mm -hmm. if we do have money left over, what are we going to do with it? That's, you know, helping our business advance. So, so my part of it was to provide user friendly financial statement and tools that you literally just plug the numbers in and off you go so that mm -hmm. you're instantly, there's no, I'm not going to tell you how inventory got calculated in the theoretical part of the world. We're not going to talk about different kinds of inventory systems. This is put your number in. Let's see what it is mm -hmm. because that's what matters. We don't care what the theorist was that came up with the formula. <laughs> we want to know what is our business actually doing at this moment. And well, that's I'm going to give an example where it's so critical because I think it's, it's awareness of what every single business went through something through this pandemic. And that something could be more business than you knew what to do with. So we've seen both sides of this coin. Um, but personally, I can speak to the fact that every single client that I was working with overnight, we had drastic strategic changes and drastic financial changes to make. And without these tools, that would have been gut-wrenching. It would have taken us off course for a very long time. Even myself, it's like, oh, like <laughs> I personally never face anything that, that business changing overnight. You know, you have slow and steady shifts that are happening in the market and you've got usually a little bit of time to adapt to that or think about pivoting or think about reimagining or reinventing. Um, this one was different. And so I think every business owner is sitting there saying, okay, I, I, I know what I know for sure is I need to be prepared. Yeah. So the, there's been some really interesting studies recently where if we look back over time, like history of business after the world wars, you know, change was so slow. You think 65 years was the average need of reinvention in an organization. And then it slowly was like 12 years in the 1980s, let's call it. Recently, before the pandemic, that statistic changed to six years. Every six years, you need to be prepared for some sort of reinvention. Now, post-pandemic, the statistics are showing it's probably a two-year cycle. 
not in every industry because you obviously have industries that um you know are 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 different from a scientific perspective probably more than anything but most businesses have to be prepared to be ready for reinvention that quickly yeah these tools allow that type of planning that's exactly right yeah, yeah. and I, I think the other part too is while you're doing that it can be personally very uh unsettling mm -hmm. and stressful mm -hmm. and I think just from people that I've dealt with in business and clients where uh, they don't know where to start mm -hmm. and they know they need to know this stuff. They don't, they know they need to track their cash, but I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And that that's not an uncommon statement for sure. Or I've heard that I can't even count how many times yeah. this past year I've heard people yeah. say, I know I have to do something different in my business. I don't know where to start. Exactly. And I think what, what we've put together is, is exactly what we would need if we were starting today mm -hmm. to say, or even if we were growing today and didn't have it to say, these are the financial statements that, that matter. The, we have to do these, like mm -hmm. whether we like to do it or want to do it is not really the point. It's we have to do them because there are going to be times where you have to produce them. So we need to understand what they are. Mm -hmm. And then you have put together a beautiful part to show where, what does my business mean and where is it going and, and what does it look like in the future? And uh, it, I tell people all the time, it is a growing living being that you I have to, it's, it's an it, organism. <laughs> it really is. It yeah. really is. I mean, we create, I, I had a client in and, and we were joking about it because we were trying, I was trying to explain the difference between you and you, your corporation. Mm -hmm. And I said, think of it like this. You just gave birth to a baby and registered the name with CRA and CRA is now looking at that baby as its own person. It's going to grow and it's going to make mistakes and it's going to do well. And, and it's not you and it's going to be on long after, I mean, touch wood, we all hope that we don't outlive our children. So we always look at it like the, the business is our baby and it's going to outlive us. Mm -hmm. So if we think of it like that, that's how I always think of it. Um, it's sometimes sparks arguments with family members, but <laughs> Again, Actually, wonderful same. dinner conversation. It is, you know, Christmas <laughs> is never the same when you're in business with your family. But uh, it, you know what? There are some very interesting conversations that you do have, and it sparks some debate for sure. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have some, you know, you see things differently when when somebody else presents that. And uh, but at the end of the day, you have to have something in writing. You have to be able to look at it. You have to be able to reflect reflect back on it to say, geez, we kind of blew the budget in January. We better tighten up in February to make up for that because there's no cash flow or, or we did a good job and there's extra cash flow. We can plan for that new machine in July. Mm -hmm. So those are the, that Lori and I have put together um, the really uh, the CFO and the CEO's job mm -hmm. in one easy package. Yep. Is that like a, a outsourced CFO, CEO, little package. Yeah. I think it's too, to just ensure people understand business is simple and wow. we want to give tools that make people feel that actually live that as an organism yeah. that it can be simple with just a couple of pieces in your toolkit that will support you we have about a minute left Lori. so maybe if you want to just share how people can get a hold of us or or where to direct them yeah, so this is our first conversation. Um, we're still we're still finalizing the landing page, so we'll get some details out on social media very very quickly on that. Um, but you can expect to see something in the next week from Kathy and I, and um, we'll be all over socials, and you can just jump on there. As we have said today, it will be very simple to buy this program as well. We want to show you that business can be simple and having these tools can be easy for you. So um, stay tuned and following the show notes, we will pop up that information that you can find. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lori, for joining me tonight. And you. uh, you'll be back and, and we'll follow up on that. That's for sure. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Join us every Monday. And this next few weeks is going to be really focused on finances for women and leading up to International Women's Day so we can really help support each other because I know we can. 
Thank you for choosing to listen to Financially Speaking Radio Show. Kathy Cook Noble will return next Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Mountain, and 1 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by making the choices that bring you all that you desire.